How's it going, everyone? A Shrewsbury here, and I wanted to go over a uh, fairly useful tip for the Overwatch Workshop when it comes to creating barriers and creating colliders that you don't want the players to be able to pass through. So oftentimes you'll want to be able to zone off parts of the map and say doorways or certain rooms and prevent access to certain players. Uh, there's a way that I've come up with to do this for myself um, that is only a few steps, but I'll have to kind of explain the process. And once you have the process down, then you should be able to repeat this um, any place that you need. So the first step is we need to figure out um, essentially what that plane is that we want to block off from players. So um, the best way I found to do this is to use a tool by another workshop user that I'll link down below um, from the original blog post. Um, but there's a code that lets us kind of render spheres and look at them and understand their position and size. So I'm going to go ahead and drop in a code here for you. I'll stay, stay here for just a minute if you want to copy it down right now. If not, let's go on in here. So essentially, I'm going to pick my map. So I'm going to use Hanamura and we're going to close off the uh, first section, that first uh, choke point and prevent all players from going through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this, and We're since I'm not on the right side, go ahead and swap to red team. And we're gonna walk roughly to the position that we wanna block off. Okay, so uh, once we're roughly here, hit the interact button, and then you'll pop out into kind of a sphere editor, if that makes sense. Um, and you can move around with normal flight controls and then grow the sphere with left click, shrink it with right click. And essentially we need to um, take one side of this sphere and use it as kind of like a barrier. So if I put, put it in place and I hit uh, crouch to hop out, we can see that we have roughly kind of a... Um, sphere blocking our path. Now, theoretically, we can add in some code to boop us out if we get inside this sphere. But for right now, let's try and make this uh, sphere look a little bit nicer. It's kind of curved and not ideal. So what we can do is we can hop back in. And the best trick I have for this is I go all the way back here and I increase the radius of the sphere so that it's relatively more flat. So I'm going to go back as far as I feel comfortable and get roughly to the middle of the height and I'm going to just push this sphere all the way up. Now if you would crouch we can go ahead and check it out. We're doing pretty good. I might want to simply shift and that looks good for me actually um so like i said in in a few seconds here we're going to add in our um code to boop us out of the sphere but you can probably notice that the sphere includes more than we want so it it would block people from coming in this window these top windows it might block people from walking back there we only want it to affect this doorway. So we're gonna need some more data. So let's go ahead and make a new sphere. Um, first, we got to uh, save this sphere by holding down crouch. And once it blips like that, then we're ready to make a new sphere. Make a new sphere. I'm gonna bring it up. I'm gonna bring it in quite a bit. I'm gonna hop out, take a look at it. I'm gonna make that even smaller. So essentially what I'm trying to do here is draw a circle around the, the area that I want the code to affect. So I only want the code to be effective when we're in this circle. And when I'm in this circle, if I'm going into this circle, boot me out. If I'm not even in this circle at all, then yeah, let me through the circle. So that's everything in theory. Now we just need the data from these spheres. We need their position 
and we need their radius. So this is what this code is good for. So if we go ahead and save our second sphere, we can go ahead and go into the inspector and we can grab that data right here. So in order of the ones that we created, the large one is at this position and this radius, whereas the second one is at this position and this radius. So all you have to do now is screenshot this and insert it into code that I'll probably just leave at the bottom of the video, but um, I'll also pause and show you guys it working in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in values into the script that you'll see at the bottom of the video, and then I'll explain to you kind of how it's working so you can get it up and running. So give me just one second, I'll be right back. All right, here I am with the code. So I wanna explain exactly where all the numbers go. So I'll, I'll give this as is with all my default values and I'll just explain how exactly this works. So the trigger, the condition trigger for this entire thing is uh, the player being in that smaller sphere. So this is the position and the radius of the smaller sphere. So it'll only get triggered if we're inside that sphere. And you can see that we're looping as fast as we possibly can, meaning um, if we're not trying to move through that barrier in the first frame, we're gonna continue checking as long as we're inside this smaller sphere to see if we are. So the way that we check to see if we are is we're in one of two positions to start. We're either inside the sphere, meaning the distance between us and the center of the large sphere is less than its radius, or we're not and we're outside. So those are the two big breaks. If we're inside, the only way we want to boop us is if we're essentially getting close to that outer edge, meaning the distance between us and the center of the sphere is greater than 39, which is a little bit less than the size. So we're getting, we're, we're leaving the center and we're almost to the edge. Then we're going to apply a force from the direction, starting with us going towards the middle. So we're going to push ourselves back to the middle with an impulse of five. Everything else is inversed over here. So essentially if we're on the outside and it, we're getting close to being less than the radius, then we're gonna push ourselves back out. So hopefully that made sense to everyone. I'll show you guys it working here so you believe me. Um, once you have it, it should look a little bit like this and it'll work from the other side as well. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that helps out. Let me know if I made any mistake in copying this uh, and don't forget to subscribe so you get more notifications on some helpful tips for the Overwatch workshop. Thanks again, bye.